Hello, our topic is Capricorn. The zodiac sign Capricorn, what does it mean? Well, the usual interpretation of Capricorn is that Capricorn is ambitious, it likes to climb a mountain. It's this like mountain goat climbing up the mountain to achieve its goals. And Capricorn is practical and business oriented. It's an earth sign, so it's down to earth. And some astrologers also emphasize that Capricorn is mature. It's ruled by Saturn, which makes it mature. It's responsible and ethical, all these Saturnian qualities. And also that Capricorn can be a bit dry. Uh, they have a dry sense of humor. It doesn't mean that they're completely boring and, and dull, but, you know, tending to be, have more of a dry sense of humor. So these are some of the things that are said about Capricorn. Uh, and, you know, there are other ideas, but I think that pretty much captures some of the most important things. Uh, career is very important. Role they play in life is very important. Uh, so that's Capricorn. I'm going to suggest a, a little bit different of an interpretation of Capricorn. That Capricorn gives the person an inclination to, ad to adopt a detached view of the world. So in this series of videos on zodiac signs, I'm emphasizing that each zodiac sign gives a relationship with the world, a lens through which you see the world, a way of experiencing the world. So the previous sign, Sagittarius, sees the world and says, ooh, the world is big. <laughs> let, me, let me explore this big world. So every zodiac sign picks out something different. And what Capricorn does is it reflects on the world. It, it uses the ability to, be, to detach ourselves sometimes called witness consciousness in, in uh, some more recent psychological literature. Um, you know, it's an idea in, in sometimes in, in some, some forms of Buddhism, an uh, uh, emphasis on detachment. This ability of the human mind to, to disengage from being immersed in experiences, to watch the experience, and even watch ourselves. A part of us can look at ourselves doing what we're doing. That's a Capricornian talent, you might say. Um, so another example of a Capricorn talent is the ability of a photographer to see what a ph photograph will look like when the picture is taken. So, you, you know, you're walking down a street, you see something, you say, oh, let me take a picture of that. The Capricorn gives this talent or ability to imagine what that picture will look like after the picture is taken. It has the ability to turn off the way we project our feelings and thoughts onto things and the way that we selectively perceive in order to present things as they are. So uh, now Capricorn doesn't always have perfect objectivity. Um, but what it does like to do is detach itself. And you'll see this expressed in a lot of ways. One of them is wearing uniforms or professional suits. A lot of Capricorns love to be a nurse uh, be, and put on their, their nurse uniform um, or, or a policeman or even business to wear the suit, like a man wearing the suit with the tie um, or a woman wearing, you know, professional uh, attire for, for the occasion. This putting on a uniform, putting on the appropriate clothes, filling a station in life. We'll sometimes call a president, Mr. President, or, or you know, whatever the position may be, or, you know, Madam Mayor of the city, that that person is filling that position. So this is part of that detachment that we play roles in life. We put on our costumes, and we are not the costume. We can become identified with the costume, but the fact that a human being can play a role in life, you know, the whole world's a stage, and we are but players in it, that, that we just can play. This is part of that objectivity of, and detachment. Uh, and the emphasis of, the, of a person's role in life, for many Capricorns, they, they're, they're identified with their role. They, 
their identity is that they are a nurse. They don't just go to work for eight hours, five days a week or something. And, and they, it becomes their identity that fulfilling that role is very important. And this is why career and business are often important. One reason why. Um, the third thing I have to say here also feeds in the, into the tendency to be business oriented. But one is that business involves people executing their roles properly. Um, uh, and another thing that leads to business is strategy and manipulation, is that if you are detached, if you can see things as they are, here's a simple example. Suppose you want to start a restaurant and you, you want to start a pizza place. You love pizza, you have, you know, you grew up with it and you, you have these, these ways of making it and you're so excited about it, you're so involved in it that the more deeply involved you are with something and it, and it your whole world is surrounded by that it hurt it makes it difficult for us to be objective you know we have the selective perception everything we're seeing is about is about pizza or whatever it is that we're deeply excited about and involved in um and and what uh, capricorn does is the ability to detach and see things and that gives the ability to to have good strategies and to manipulate things. So Capricorn uh, gives this ability to, to come up with an, a concept and implement a plan, <clears throat> excuse me, a plan that can be effective. Um, so that, and which leads to point number four, they kind of very often execute things very well and often with a lot of formality um, because they know the role. So this is what I think is behind the Capricorn, is this detachment. Are they ambitious and climb a mountain? Yes, uh, very often, not necessarily. What's always true is the detachment and the objectivity. Not always ambitious, not always climbing mountains, um, but but this detachment and reflection, it shows up in People like photographers, shows up in business, um, shows up in some religious and philosophical uh, approaches like, like Buddhism. You find people with strong Capricorn are often inclined to a Buddhist view, um, often they're very scientific, very effective in the world. So a, a lot of uh, different things can come out of this talent and this drive. Every sign gives a drive, this desire to be able to see things as they are. It's liberating to see things as they are. So, so what we're doing in this series of 12 videos is we're looking at the people who are extreme in a zodiac sign. Um, and I, here is a link to two videos that explain the technical details behind why this kind of study is so powerful. So here are the extreme uh, Capricorns. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and four of them we have good biographical information for. There are three. One is a chemist, one a tennis player, and the one was the victim of a murder. I couldn't find much biographical information for. And these four, Francesco Alberoni, who's a writer, Rudolf Bing. Now, after I finished this whole uh, uh, research, and collected all this data and, and got ready to and finished making my slides. A lot of work goes into making these presentations. Um, and I was going over it. I noticed that Rudolf Bing is actually A data. We in, in some of the older versions of the series we had him as AA data. And sometimes he's in there twice, one with his name spelled with an F and one with a PH. And uh, the the one spelled with a PH has a link to the Astro Data Bank data and there's they're rating it as A. Not AA uh, because it was data given by him and it's a round number time, 8 a.m. I decided to leave him in here. Um, I wasn't sure what my rules should be um, at this point. So, you know, I'll go through him quickly because he's probably not really AA data. And that leaves us really three, Alberoni, Grierson, and Daniel Rops. But three is enough. The three extreme... Uh, Capricorns with AA data must 
have Capricorn qualities. Now, do they? Well, I think Al Baroni is very interesting. Uh, he's a writer, and he writes about psychology. So he's not a you know primarily a business person or any of the things we think of with Capricorn. He deals with very juicy issues like love and sexuality. Um, but notice how he does it. If we think of Capricorn as that ability to detach uh, and see things as they are, that's exactly what he does. And one thing you'll you'll see with Capricorn um, that you don't read about very often is sometimes they take issues that people are normally so enmeshed in, so engaged in, that it's difficult for us to be detached. Why does Capricorn choose those uh, those uh, kinds of situations? Because that's where they can contribute a lot. If there's a situation where we're so immersed in it, so engaged in it, we're not able to think about it clearly, that's where the Capricorn talent is very useful. Um, so they often focus on areas like that, and that's exactly what Alberani does. Here's a section from a, a PDF file, uh, alberani.it slash PDF slash I love you dot PDF. You can, you can uh, enter that in your browser and, and read the whole thing if you want to. Um, but here's a, a section from uh, fairly early in that uh, in that file uh, in a, a very large article. Uh, but what does being in love mean? What is the meaning of I love you? Some people say they are always falling in love or never fall out of it. Others hold that falling in love is a fairly rare occurrence in a single lifetime. And then, during a moment of confidence, a person will happen to confess to having had numerous love affairs, but only one great love. Okay, you know, this, I'm going to interrupt right there. You know, taking this out of context, I just want to bring you into the to what he's saying here. Um, isn't this true? I mean, I read this, and I said, yeah, that's exactly what happens. You know, we talk about falling in love. Some people say they have one great love. Okay, let me, let me read on here. Uh, many meanings indeed lie behind the words falling in love, love, caring, affection, tenderness, passion, and sexual attraction. Our aim is to put some order into this untidy state of affairs by creating the basis for a real science of love. That is about as Capricornian as you can get. Using this idea of Capricorn, he is the living embodiment of Capricorn regardless of whether he's climbing mountains, whether he has a dry sense of humor, all these things we associate with Capricorn, this fundamental concept for Capricorn is exactly what he is. So we have a huge confirmation that, that this understanding of Capricorn is working. It's working with our extreme Capricorn. Um, and He's the most extreme. He's triple Capricorn. Sun, moon, ascendant in Capricorn. Sun just below the horizon and just below the ascendant in Capricorn. And also Mercury, Venus, Mars, <clears throat> and the ruler of Capricorn, Saturn, are all in Capricorn. You just can't get any more Capricorn than this. And he is the living expression of Capricorn. Amazing. I think this is phenomenal. It suggests that through these controlled studies where we pick out the extreme people, we can really sort out how the astrology really works. Okay, so, so that really makes sense. Um, and here's another source of information, a Wikipedia article, and you, know, you can Google and get more information about them if you want. Now here's Rudolf Bing. Um, He's actually a data, so I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him, um, but just to, to show his chart real quickly, even if his ascendant is not Capricorn, and it's kind of near the beginning of Capricorn, so if, he's, he, was, if he was born near 8 a.m., he does have Capricorn rising. Um, and he, he is double Capricorn in any, any case, Sun, Moon. Um, the ruler Saturn is in Capricorn as well. Uh, so Sun, Moon, Saturn and Mercury and Mars and Jupiter all in Capricorn. So even if he doesn't have the Ascendant in Capricorn, he has a lot of Capricorn. Um, but using the formal um, criteria that might knock him down some number of points, 
and he might not be among the most extreme uh, using the cutoff that I used. But he would have a lot of Capricorn, and since I did all this work, I'll just share with you what I came up with. Um, he has commanding management ability that develops from the object, his objectivity and his ability and his interest in managing affairs. So, so all these Capricorn incl inclinations. Um, I'll just uh, let you pause here. I was going to read this whole thing, but since he's only A data, I'll let you uh, read this um, section. You can pause this and read it if yourself, yourself if you want to. Let me go on to the next slide. Um, more letters uh, that, written by uh, Rudolf Bing. And again, you can pause this and read this if you want to. Here he shows his ability to frame to frame ideas in a very professional way. And there are other things in the chart that can give this ability, like Mercury-Saturn aspects, for example. The Capricorn is one of the things that gives this ability to frame things in, in a manner to take a view, to take a, a perspective on it, and to present things in a coherent, convincing way. Um, so here's his response to an angry uh, Met sub subscriber, uh, the, the the Opera House the, the, um, that he was managing, and I just think the the way he very professionally and very um, in a, a very mature, sophisticated way responds to things. That talent can come from different things. One of them is Capricorn. Uh, so this is the essence of Capricorn. Here's another sample letter. There's a whole website of these letters that he wrote. Um, this is somebody upset because he has uh, uh, African-American performers um, and, and, and his way of handling it. Very professional, very clear, and also very beautiful the way he, he presents this information. Um, basically, he says, I will put the best person for the part. I don't care if they're black or white. I mean, that's obvious to us nowadays, but back in the 50s, this, this was very controversial. So you might think of this as very progressive. You know, he has Venus and Mars and Aquarius. We can see in the background his chart, maybe, you know, etc. cetera. Um, but it's also a matter of just clarity that this is the way things should work. So it's a very healthy, positive, constructive Capricorn expression. A real master. Um, and here's another letter. You can pause the, uh, the video again if you if you want to study these things. Qualitative research, digging in and understanding if people really fit the astrology is very time consuming. You you have to dig in deep and spend a lot of time going through biographies. Um, so you know you can stop the video and read through this and um, and evaluate it. But again, another example of his very professional way of dealing with things. And I think this term frame, he's able to frame things in a in a way. It's a Capricorn talent. Okay, uh, this is where he's um, communicating with a, one of his um, performers who's not showing up for practice. And anybody who's managed a business or, or an enterprise knows about these problems. How do you deal with these things? Uh, Rudolf Bing could write a book about it. I mean, he is an expert at, at doing this. Um, anyway, the Capricorn talent. Um, so, insistence on facts, clarity, contracts, ability to push through the problems of personality, of biases, his objectivity, gives him the ability to command and lead, his interest in management and strategy. So all these images of Capricorn as the great business person, which Rudolf Bing was, um, they're, they're, they develop uh, out of this ability to see things as they are and frame them as they are. Okay, lastly, uh, Herbert Grierson, poet. Uh, now, this is interesting. We don't think of poetry as Capricorn. We think of it as Piscean or Neptunian or, or something. Um, and he's an editor um, and involved in poetry. And I want to read this section uh, from this website, which I have uh, down here. If you want to go to it, you can enter all that in and go, go to this website. Um, he writes, Poetry is the first and last of all knowledge. It is as immortal as the heart of man. Its themes are the, the simplest experiences of the surface of life, sorrow, and joy, 
love and battle, the peace of the country, the bustle and stir of towns, but equally the boldest conceptions, the profoundest intuitions, the subtlest and most complex classifications, and discourse of reason, if into these two the poet can carry sensation, make of them passionate experiences, communicable in vivid and moving imagery, in rich and varied harmonies. And let's look at his chart. Uh, there it is. Sun, moon, Venus, uh, Mercury, Venus, m sun, moon, Mercury, Venus, and Mars, all the two lights and the three inner planets, and Jupiter, all in Capricorn. He has Virgo rising. The ruler is Mercury in Capricorn. That is a huge amount of Capricorn. He must express Capricorn qualities very clearly. Does he? Well, what I'm going to suggest here is that he really believes in poetry, the first and last of all knowledge. And I think what he's saying here, if we rephrase this in a Capricornian way, is that poetry, which we sometimes think of as flights of fancy or imagination, is actually capturing reality. It's capturing our awareness. What is our awareness of things? Our, our awareness, our daily experiences are not strictly data. You know, they're not strictly like scientific observations. We, we walk around, we take a walk through the woods, we feel things, we notice things. Um, poetry is this talent for capturing our experience, for photographing our feelings, our direct contact with life. So poetry, in a way, is this kind of um, incisive, direct way to get to the to the heart of the existential reality we're in. Our soys, our, our soys, <laughs> I combine sorrows and joys. Our sorrows and joys, um, everything. I mean, you can just read this again with that in mind. So, you know, in, in studying astrology, I learn things, and I'm learning from this that for some people, poetry is a Capricornian, uh, it's a Capricornian enterprise to, there must be other things in the chart that give this interest in this immediate existential level of Capricorn. Um, but it's capturing reality. He says it's the first and last of all knowledge. How many of us believe that or thought of that? You know, I tend to think of poetry as just one other thing out there. I don't think of it as the first and last of all knowledge, but in this sense it is. Some kind of, of um, integration of Capricorn, maybe with like an Aries, of getting to the, to the beginning point of things to, to really express where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, where uh, our, all of our thoughts generate from, from uh, and to be able to capture that. So we need to think deeply about if the astrology is really working, what it means in people's lives. And I think if we look at it this way, we can see that he is an extreme uh, Capricorn. Um, so here I rephrase a lot of what I just said. Uh, you know, I state it maybe a little bit differently. You can pause the video if you want and read all that. Um, but I'm just written down here the same thing I, I just said. Um, so this is the way that I can see how, in my last paragraph here, this is the way that I can see how Grierson is extremely and obviously Capricorn. Um, I've for many years associated photography with Capricorn, and what I'm learning from looking at Grierson's chart, that not only photography, but poetry sometimes can be Capricorn. And that one aspect of Capricorn, that aspect of capturing the experience, it's like a trick of the mind. Poetry is like a trick of the mind, a, a talent to be in the experience, which I talk about with Scorpio, to be in the experience, to be simultaneously in it like a Scorpio function and simultaneously watch it, a Capricorn function, and then maybe Aries to get to the essence and beginning point. So I think Capricorn is one very, very strong ingredient in the experience of poetry for many poets. Maybe not for all, but for Grierson, I think so. So 
again, I think if we understand the zodiac signs in this kind of a deep way and and of getting to the foundation, the core thing involved that Capricorn is this relationship with the world, then we can get to the heart of how it's functioning for different people. And doesn't always come out in the archetypal images that, that immediately come to mind, and certainly not in the behaviors that we think. He's not, as far as I know, not primarily a businessman, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but the Capricorn function, I think, is very, very strong. Um, oh, we have we have another person here. Um, Daniel Rops, um, he does a similar thing that, that we've seen with the other Capricorns, where he takes things that we're so involved in, like our, our religions, our assumptions about the world, the way we see things, and he questions them and tries to get a, a clear frame of reference to how these things work. So he was brought up a Roman Catholic. Um, by the 1920s, he became agnostic. Um, and then he wrote about the loss of meaning, uh, the loss of sense of direction in an increasingly industrialized and mechanized world. So he's sitting at this crossroads between faith, like a Roman Catholic faith, and what happens when you lack faith? Life can become meaningless, lack direction. And then he considers misery and the social injustice, the apparent indifference of Christians to, the, to people they call their brothers. So Christians are saying, you know, you're my brothers, but they're not always acting as if they feel that way. And he, he questions whether Christianity is a living force in our world. Well, a lot of us have had these questions. Um, I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to be aware of these things. But he's writing about this in the 1920s and 1930s, a little bit, you might say, ahead of his time um, in regards to this, I think, probably becoming more, uh, people becoming more aware of these things. But his honesty, the alternatives did not seem any better. Marxism claimed to concern itself with people's material well-being, but quite ignored their non-material needs. This was unacceptable for him. He later returns to the Catholic Church, having come to feel that in spite of the shortcomings of the Christians, it was only through Christianity that the technological age could be reconciled with humanity's inner needs. Um, so this attempt to get a frame of reference, some kind of objectivity, I think it does have uh, some Capricorn elements to it. Um, like a photographer trying to capture what's really going on. Um, so, yeah, and, and to try to sort that out. It does seem he's very philosophical as well, the big picture. Um, let's look at his chart. Um, okay, so there it is. He has Leo rising. The ruler of the Ascendant is in Capricorn, the Sun. He's got Sun and Moon in Capricorn, along with Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. That's a lot of Capricorn. Um, so, you know, it becomes very, very interesting to, to, to think about, is he really an extreme Capricorn? Also, he is in a formal role as a, um, you know, as, as a person in the church, as a clergy person, um, uh, well, I don't know. Well, he was not. A, was he a clergyman? Uh, no, I guess he wasn't actually a clergyman, um, a writer and historian. Well, anyway, um, I think that uh, you know we can make an argument that he does. He is interested in capturing life as it is to some extent. I think we would need to have more biographical information about him to to get a, a clearer uh, understanding. We don't have a lot of information about him. But overall, I think we can conclude that the extreme Capricorns do exhibit the inclination to reflect on things in an objective manner. Uh, that's certainly part of what Daniel Rops was doing, maybe not as conspicuously as the others, uh, to capture what is and the ability to edit, manipulate, strategize, and objectify things that normally are so near and dear to us that we are not able to be objective about them. And for some people... Uh, that's exactly what they're doing, uh, taking love and and making a science of love. You know, so sometimes it's even you know crystal clear. But I think for all of these people, uh, we can reasonably conclude that they are doing this. Um, by the way, in another video on on the nature of zodiac signs in general, 
I give the example of Elvis Presley's chart. And there are other research methods in addition to extreme case sampling. Um, and one is people that don't, that have strong Capricorn, and, and it's hard to see what it is. Like for Elvis Presley, uh, I mentioned him in another chart. And he has several planets in Capricorn. Uh, Venus is in Capricorn. So for someone who is n the opposite of being dry, <clears throat> excuse me, the opposite of being detached, this electric personality who pulls people into his life, he's so dramatic and powerful. Where is the Capricorn? And we, we definitely need to refrain from thinking about Capricorn as being dry, as being necessarily dry. Um, there may be a, a dryness to it, maybe in medical astrology or in certain applications that's true, but in terms of just simply saying the person's got a dry personality, um, Elvis is the opposite of a dry personality. But if we think of him <clears throat> as using the power of detachment and the interest in manipulation or his role, he became identified with his role in life. And the importance of costumes, his costume, his uh, fancy clothes that were shining, his sequin uh, uh, outfits and everything. This costume, this role, that he, this identity that he creates is fantastic. And I think that's the power of Capricorn. Um, again, very evident in who he is. He, he becomes his role, this, this, pers this uh, uh, star on the stage. So um, I think if we think about Capricorn in this way, it, it really helps us better understand uh, how Capricorn works in the lives of people. Okay, that's it, my friends. Um, here's some links to our software and, and uh, other services and uh, some of the other websites that we're involved in. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.